Welcome back to Little Snickers, baby. I'm Mike Rainey. Next to me is the very handsome Cal Donjala. What's up, my Chippy? How are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you? You're looking good. You got them gray sweatpants on, sharing some meat with yeah, everybody. You know, you're trying to see the imprint of this little fucking <laughs> snail head. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, do you think we'll have to pixelate anything for our viewers in, in Japan? Or Yeah, it's gonna, it looks like a sealed condom, <laughs> but, for, <laughs> but for tiny penises. It's a flat little calamari piece. <laughs> Jake Patera, how are you, buddy? Hey, guys. How are you? Good, man. You got God damn, everybody's wearing gray yeah. sweatpants in here. Danny Dubs, welcome, my friend. No gray, we're, we're team no gray sweatpants, yeah. so you guys got to flash meat for all four of us. Yeah, all right. I'll hang bird for my boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say something. No, no, no. You want to <laughs> say something about the great sweatpants bird? In my head, I'm like, it's more of a clothespin than hanging anything. And just, you know, it's oh, not man. bad. Yeah. That's pretty good, man. I, you know, I decide, that's why I decided against it, guys. I, <laughs> <laughs> because it's an average penis size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, damn. Well, we're going to change that right now. We're going to fluff you guys up. All right. <laughs> and for the record, I got Blue Chew on the shelf over there if anybody needs it. All I got to do is look into your eyes, and I'll be hard in 45 oh, minutes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, I'm really hoping we get to do my little stinger tonight and that we don't have your Impractical Jokers podcast. Why? It's related to Blue Chew. Really? Yeah, dude. Should we all get hard as shit then? <laughs> I Should think we put a pause on this and uh, get hard as fuck together? If every person in this room got hard as shit, it would be the perfect way to spit in the face of this dude that we're about to cover. Yeah. All right. Well, Matter of fact, get this coin let's flipped, do the right? coin toss and then we'll go from there. We'll decide. All right. Jake, start fluffing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you can always yeah, go back down. Jesus, look at that. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Already started. <laughs> All right. If you win the coin toss. We're going to talk about a serial killer, some twisted Joker serial killer. But if I win, we'll throw on some bikinis and talk about the little Jokers. Or the impractical Jokers. All right, here we go, baby. Oh, you won again, Mike. Jesus Man, Christ. Man, I am on a roll, baby. Really good at this. All right. So, the gentleman that we're covering tonight was not ever able to achieve a boner. <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> you heard me right. Do you have this right in writing from a fucking nurse practitioner, at least? From his own words. He said he never, never had blood in his dick. I'm talking about the Rostov Ripper, Andre Chikatilo. Where is he really from Jamaica? <laughs> <laughs> Close Russia. <laughs> Actually, Ukraine. Ukraine. He's from Ukraine. Why is he Rasta? No, Rostov. That's where he's from. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, I heard Rostov <laughs> too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I pictured, yeah. I pictured a Jamaican dude who never got hard. Yeah, which is impossible to imagine. <laughs> Could you imagine yeah. daggering a woman with a soft ass dick? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm worried. Unhappy now. <laughs> but no, but yeah, I the, can imagine the, a, a man in a funny winter Russian hat not having a hard bird. It's yeah, cold. You, that that's a great explanation for it's that. It's cold Jake. here too. Yeah. That's why I don't get boners in the winter. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> when do you come out of hibernation? <laughs> uh, depends on what uh, the groundhog says. <laughs> <laughs> when typically, Gus. typically April I start to show. See my Six shadow. more weeks of helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Gus, Pennsylvania's second most famous groundhog. <laughs> Dude, this guy really claims that he never in his life. Got a boner. I believe him. One, be <laughs> dude. 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 One because he was born a waterhead. <laughs> I don't know why, but I trust him. <laughs> I, I think the clinical term is uh, hydroencephaly or hydroencephalus. And that's not a real term. It is, dude. It's a buildup of spine sp of uh, uh, fluid in your brain. Oh my god, waterheads are based on real science? Dog, it's a real thing. It's oh. a buildup of fluid. You have an excess of fluid in your brain. What? And it can cause all kinds of issues. And he claims that his waterheadedness resulted in <laughs> no boners and fucking bedwetting throughout his life. Sounds like a dude who pissed the bed and never got any pussy to me. <laughs> dude. Chicks tried to give him pussy. Well, did he try to get any butt from a dude? He, dude, he did. He wasn't gay. 
He God. tried to get hard. He tried to fuck, and it never fucking what worked. T- what era of time are we talking? He was born October sixteenth, nineteen thirty six. All right. And he uh, lived into the nineties. Horny back then. They were man, dude. And he lived in a rural area, so you know they're fucking. For sure. That's fucking, all you can yeah, do out there. None of those animals are safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah did he try? Was he a freak? Was he a freak nasty on the sheep? <laughs> He was bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wouldn't try to fuck sheep. But anyway, dude, his his family, they were farm laborers. And his mother was named Anna and his father was named Roman. He didn't chill with his dad for a good portion of his life because his dad got drafted into World War II to fight for the Red Army. And unfortunately, the dad got caught and was a POW. And that ended up being a, a major cause of shame for him because not only did the dad got, get caught and was a POW but after the war ended because he voluntarily surrendered to the Nazis he was thrown in a Russian prison camp damn yeah pretty fucked up you gotta so, just get killed by the Nazis then or you're going to Russian jail if that's the case either right. way you're fucked yeah so his mom Anna he had an older wife let me back it up a little bit he had an older brother named Stepan, who he never met. And the mom claimed, now, at this time, there was widespread famine throughout Ukraine as a result of um, Stalin's policies of, of something called uh, collectivization, whereas they took control of all the private land and they used it for, the government essentially took control of all the farm. Yeah. Due to that, there was widespread famine. And because of that, there was apparently a lot of cannibalism in that area. And... Oh my God! Yeah, and Andre Chikatilo's mom told him that his brother, his older brother Stepan, who he never met, was kidnapped by neighbors and eaten. Neighbors? You think your neighbors are bad, dog? They're not even going to a different <laughs> town to eat somebody. <laughs> Jesus Christ! She would. She was. Uh, she was paranoid. She would tell him not to leave the yard, or you might get, get eaten. eaten, kidnapped, and fucking eaten because <laughs> motherfuckers are starving. Dude, the most extreme exaggeration. Was that yeah? Was what, real, did she was make a that up? Thing for him. I don't know. But I I haven't needles. seen anything that would substantiate it, but that is to me, it's too insane to fucking make up. Yeah. Now, at the time, there's so much fucked up shit going on because the Nazis had invaded that region, so there was fucking regular bombing, there was shootings in the streets. In 1943, she gave birth to a girl, and the dad was away at war, so it wasn't his. So it's logical to assume that that kid could have been the result of a Nazi soldier bursting into their hut and raping the mother. Uh Now, if that's the case, it's especially fucked up because they lived in a one-room hut and they all had to sleep together. Jesus Christ. So in this one-room hut, they're sleeping in the same mattress in the same bed. It's him, his mom, and eventually the sister in 1943. And because he's wetting the bed constantly, his mom is losing her fucking shit. Not only is she berating him... It's a quick way to get your own bed, though. <laughs> it's like the easiest way. <laughs> Dude, honestly, if, if we had to share a bed and you were pissing the bed constantly, I would just buy bunk beds and I would fucking rain down on you every fucking night. <laughs> Two rights doesn't make a wrong, Mike. Uh, in this case, it does. <laughs> so not only would she berate him verbally, but she would whip his fucking ass, too. Yeah. Just for pissing. He had no control over it. Beat it out of him. He's like, Mom, what the hell? What do you want here, huh? <laughs> no, Signorelli's back. <laughs> um, do you think maybe he couldn't get a boner because he saw his mom get raped in front of him as a child? I can't that imagine that helps. That up sexually for a while. I can't imagine that helps. All right. This dude, this is fucked. This is a fucked <laughs> upbringing, dude. Yeah. Did Jesus. you guys ever have to share a bed with your mom at any point? No, with my sister at one point. How did that go? It was fine. I think a couple years when my younger sister was first born. Okay. So. I think I remember you telling me I was probably like six and she was probably like 11. Okay. Maybe a couple years around there. I had to share a bed a couple times. But I was kind of kid. I'd throw the leg over the person. Uh, You you dirty devil. (laughs) So I got... They're like, yeah, he'll just keep his own room. Yeah. <laughs> Step, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're gross, dude. Stop. <laughs> I don't have time for your dude, fucking... Put that away. Your fucking dirtball shit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so this motherfucker's got everything going against him at this point. He's born a fucking waterhead. His dad bailed on him, essentially. He's pissing the bed constantly. His mom's whipping his ass. And he's at school. At school, he's a fucking weak, timid kid. So all these fucking badass fucking Russian kids are, are taunting him, fucking bullying him. So he's getting it from all ends. Now, he's moving into puberty. John, Jake, Danny Dubs. Could you imagine moving into puberty and not being able to deal with boners? As cumbersome as boners can be, you almost want that problem, though. Well, you want what comes at the end. Comes, LOL. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> LOL at myself. But, uh, dog, yeah. he, he had no boners to fucking fight off. That's crazy. He had nothing to tuck into the waistband of his sweatpants. That's a stress free, stress free uh, high school experience right there. Uh, dude, I think it's, it's the exact opposite. Up to a opposite. point, though. Up to a point when it's not happening. It's like, oh my god, everybody. Yeah. Literally, everybody else is getting a boner That's except true. me. All your boys are just hard as fuck during this, <laughs> and you're like, ah oh, man, I'm not horny yet, dude. Nothing, nothing was the worst than trying to walk with your butt out. Like, <laughs> oh <laughs> man. <laughs> ah, I miss getting a boner. <laughs> You'll get one again, man. What, what can I do for you? Well, you fluff me. Okay, we'll figure it out. But as he gets through high school, there's a there's something significant that happens when he's 15. So he's fucking around with a local girl. He throws her down, and he's starting to recognize that, like, okay, cool. I like having power over another person, even though he can't get boners. During this roughhousing with this girl at the age of 15. This is like non-sexual roughhousing yeah, at this point? Yeah, just fucking with this poor girl. Okay. Holds her down. While he's holding her down, not hard, still ejaculates. A soft comer, Jake. Wow. I told wild. you it was real. <laughs> I, don't, I still don't believe it. It's That's crazy. You can. Yeah, of course. Wow. You will one day as well. Thank you. <laughs> Look, Fred Flintstone didn't need a fucking motor in that car to drive. All right? So just think of it in those terms. Yes, think of it in Hanna-Barbera terms. <laughs> yes. Dude, do you know how fucking horny you have to be to be able to come with a soft-ass dick? This is crazy. Yeah, this is like a scientific anomaly. As a teenager, that's wild. It's fucking gross. It's something you have to learn. <laughs> it only comes with age. Pretty disgusting, and, dude. <laughs> That's like Matrix level <laughs> ejaculation. Did the girl? Was she like, ew? Like even more gross. Out Just grossed out. Hard. And dude, speaking of that Matrix level of ejaculation, like Morpheus would hand give you the option of a red pill, a blue pill, or a blue chew. <laughs> but the girl was grossed out. And on top of that, too, rumors started to spread that all right, he's fucking gross. So not only can't he get hard, but he's probably going to come on you if he roughhouses with you. Guaranteed not to get hard and guaranteed to come. We can't figure this guy out. Besides, like, <laughs> like when you said he like enjoyed power over people, I was like, oh, he should just be a wrestler. <laughs> and then he told me that he just comes with a soft dick, and I'm like, ah, maybe he shouldn't. The great Combino. <laughs> <laughs> he goes through high school, no boners, uh, graduated magna cum laude. Did he really? Or are you no, just... No, 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 <laughs> he can't, Dude, he was able to come, but he just couldn't get a boner. Yeah. So, he's... But all, that means you can't insert... I know. Dude, yeah. dude, so, dude there's something coming up soon related to that. The, the best he's going to get is is his balls and his dick in a girl's mouth. <laughs> Mike, would it be fair to say that he was magna come softly? I think that would be, Jake. I think so too. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I really do. I'm gonna get my that. car keys. <laughs> <laughs> he graduates from high school. He's he's emasculated at this point, so he's looking for a career path. Which everybody would, knows, right? It, this yeah, is the people talk know. of his class. Yeah, and it's yeah. like you. I mean, you can't kind of play it off because there's always those kids in high school. They're just the targets of vicious rumors that aren't true. Yeah. And as high school progresses, you start to realize, like, oh, shit, maybe they were just fucking with that kid. Yeah. So I guess that's the only route he could have taken. I wish I would have thought of this rumor in high school. I could have taken a lot of good men down. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bad men, actually. <laughs> a lot of bad boys would have went down hard if but, I said he, they were coming soft in locker rooms. But the, the, the pie would have been in your face once they proved that they could get hard. Because if somebody leveled those kind of <laughs> yeah. accusations at me, dude, yeah. I would whip it out there in geometry. <laughs> Just the slightest wind would blow. Yeah. 
There would be nothing acute about this. And then you'd risk <laughs> them making fun of your little light switch down there. John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It's four and a half. Thank Soft, you. baby. <laughs> <laughs> So he's looking for a career path that will enable him to obtain the mascul- uh, the masculinity that he can't feel anywhere else. Yeah, and where is this? This is in Ukraine. Okay. He applies to Moscow State University, which is their law program, which seemed to be like the fast track for getting into um, Soviet politics. What a weird mindset. The thing that makes you look manly is this fucking... Chopping down a tree or, like, fucking building a house. But not dude, being a fucking politician. But, dude, he realized, I, I think, in that one situation where he held the girl down, and I'm sure there were others, but that was only one of the few that was mentioned during that time period. He, like, literally had Just had to be powerful. He people. had to have yeah. power over people. So, in his mind, he saw that the most influential people in that region were... Soviet politicians. Yeah. So he went to Moscow State University, home of the fighting kangaroos. No. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't. He applied there. He applied there, and then he found out that he didn't get in. He blamed his father and the shame that came upon with him being a POW, and then coming out and it being revealed that he, not only was he not just captured, but he surrendered. Yeah. Is that? Uh feasible you think or did he just no i think he just didn't get in and i think they probably just saw that he was a weirdo he was weak and he wasn't built for russian politics or soviet politics or was it his essay on his soft penis (laughs) (laughs) dude that was actually did forty thousand words more than we asked for (laughs) (laughs) and they knew he was a prankster instead of a tassel he just had like a replica of his bird hanging off the side of his cap He picked the next best thing, which was a two-year trade school for engineering. All right. Went and he did that. That's the next best thing. It's a fucking totally different path in life. It was just more suited to his capabilities because he wasn't a dummy. I mean, like, he he did get good grades. Teachers liked him just because he wasn't a problem, and I guess he would try. Yeah. But he wasn't hiding his boner all day in class. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Speaking of hiding boners, man. (laughs) <laughs> the class that would do it most for me is I had a Spanish teacher my sophomore year named Miss Harrison, and she had a, a very thick Southern accent. Really? With us, even while speaking Spanish? It, it, dude, it, you think so- Southern accents by itself are hot? Imagine coupling that with the Spanish with language. some biblioteca talk? Ooh. God damn. You trying to get me hard, dude? <laughs> Fuck. Jake, hit him. <laughs> Throw your hot coffee at him. <laughs> For real, we got to have like a stick or something anytime he tries to get me hard on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make him wear a fucking a shock herringbone chain or something. I'm actually, that's a welcome. I will take a shock collar. Every time I look at your bird, you have to shock me. <laughs> or we'll just get like one of those, uh, a set of those vibrating panties. <laughs> and every time I notice you're looking at me, I'll make yours vibrate. <laughs> Wait, then we're getting each other hard. No, wait. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. All right, we're going to have to switch from Patreon to OnlyFans for this episode. <laughs> yeah. Did you have to hide your boner from that lady a bunch? Every fucking day, dude. Yeah. I mean, boners were just... Boners were popping out like fucking wet gremlins. Like, all day long, everywhere you fucking went in high school. But with that kind of stimulation, and that, that was... We, we had maybe, I think, three female teachers in school. And she was... By far, had the most qualities that a person just getting boners would really drive that kind of person nuts. Yeah, you had so. a thousand yard stare there for a second. I could tell. Really <laughs> you out. Dude, I I had no hot teachers. Like my homeroom teacher. Where were your boners I, coming from? Uh, t- honestly, the the construction of the desk. Because so the way the desk was built, it was like one of those half desks. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? And like there was like these little aluminum bars underneath that would just rub against everything. Yeah, like when you brush your teeth at night and you're leaning and your bird's getting pressed on by the corner. Precisely. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Talking to sink boner. Because every homeroom, I would get it. (laughs) And it wasn't the teacher doing it because she looked like the lady from like Home Alone in the Home Alone 2 in the, the, you know, park. Oh, the pigeon lady? Yeah. So that wasn't doing it for me. Just this cold, hard desk steel. 
Take all that bird shit off that lady <laughs> and those fucking burlap yeah. sacks. She wasn't bad looking, all right? Yeah, e- woman. Either way, Jake and the pigeons were dropping white shit everywhere. <laughs> Dude, those desks used to drive me nuts because I used to get my balls busted all the time in grade school for having bad handwriting. Because you were left-handed. On I'm fucking right-handed left-handed. Desk. My elbow is hanging off the goddamn desk. Uh, they didn't dude. even have one. They didn't have one fucking left-handed desk. Damn. And there's it, always one. But dude, not even not only not having a left-handed desk available, but just re- re- restraining yourself from busting a kid's balls for not having good handwriting. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe just okay. Like he's got an excuse. Yeah. Well, it's pretty gay to have pretty handwriting. Oh, I would have liked it. I have it. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, I would like I to see that sometime. Write me a letter, dude. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All the uh, eyes have <laughs> hearts on them. All right, get, order some correspondence. Getting back to the uh, Chikatilo. <laughs> That's uh, Italian for coming soft bird. <laughs> he, dude, even though he can't get fucking boners, he's done school, he's going to a trade program for engineering, he gets a girlfriend. Damn. He gets a girlfriend named Tatiana. Dude. Despite his inability yes. to get his penis erect. John, they're together. This, for how long? A year and a half. Man, Dude. that lady must have been fucking busted, yo. By <laughs> by his account, they try to have sex on two separate occasions. Jesus Christ. Both times, he can't get hard. Fails miserably. She fucking roasts his ass. Then eventually, she bails on him. Dude, all right. All right. So at this Very point, weird. dude, at this point, the relationship <laughs> ends. Fortunately for him, he gets drafted into the army. It's like, all right, cool. Now I have a reason to not get boners. Okay. However, <laughs> wait. Do you, are you aware of a different army than I am? <laughs> uh, what war is this? <laughs> or like was it just matters? like every every? Well, like, yeah, you had to do no mandatory military wartime. service okay. in a uh, Soviet Union. All right. He gets drafted into the army. He goes, he goes and he does his time. And while he's there, you know, it, they have time to just, they have leave. When they have leave, they go out, they get chicks, they bring them back to the fucking barracks and uh-huh. bust their cheeks out. The other soldiers take note that he's never getting any cheeks. So they start busting his balls for that. Rumor starts spreading that he's gay, which, is the, which they say is the reason why he's not bringing chicks back. Then eventually he starts bringing chicks back and he can't perform. So he wants to put on the show, make sure the other guys see that these chicks are coming in with him. But then when he gets them in the bed, he can't do anything. And they start fucking roasting him. He can put his limp dick in their mouth. Act like Noriega, dude. I don't fuck. I just get head, too. <laughs> <laughs> but how long can you keep that ruse up? I always found that very weird that Noriega wouldn't fuck chicks. Did you, didn't you? did you think that was weird? I don't remember he that just line. just get head. That was his thing. He wouldn't fuck chicks. He would just get head. What a strange thing to do. Right? Who's Noriega? What, uh, I don't even want to say that. N-O-R-E. Rapper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see how nervous I got saying you can't that? Jake, okay. say it. No. Wait, go in front of the camera. Nope, nope. <laughs> what are you going to say? <laughs> nope, not nothing. Can't say his name. He can't figure it out. Yeah. I am, yeah. I'm going to have to make an apology video if I try to say his name again. The only thing better than pussy is new pussy, Noriega. Come on, dude. You know this. <clears throat> I disagree, man. <laughs> I like old pussy man I was using one rapper to quote to another But <laughs> I've always found that quote strange It's a weird lyric Dude Why don't you just put a condom on Are you afraid of having a kid? I'll have to look up if yeah. he's childless still Maybe that's the answer Yeah I don't know But it's Going back right. That's alright man Going back to old pussy Give me pussy <laughs> That's been on Antique Roadshow <laughs> That's how much I value older pussy man <laughs> So he starts bringing chicks back to the barracks. He can't fuck. Word starts getting around where he's stationed that he's a limp dick little little pussy boy. Yeah. That's that's a bummer. That's a bad place to get called out. Yeah. Fucking the army barracks. Yeah, there's there's no coming back from that. And you can't fucking get out of that situation. Yeah. Like, you, you just gotta, have to... You got to take control, man. You got to put, like, googly eyes on your dick and then just, like, <laughs> have a little puppet Put a little show. wig on it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Take, it, take the power back. Oh, look at this. <laughs> like, or just improvise. Like, you know how, like, when uh, you were poor and you couldn't afford to get a splint on your broken finger, like, put two popsicle sticks yeah, on the other yeah. side? Just figure something put out, Put the dude. condom around that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Or just try fucking a lady with the popsicle. <laughs> there you go. Just It actually gets smaller the more I fuck. <laughs> he could have just been the dude that goes down on chicks for hours, you know? There were <laughs> options. I knew that, Yeah. But then again, dude, this is... In the Soviet Union, sexual education was so limited because they were so conservative. Yeah. And that plays into something that ends up coming about later. But, like, I wonder in regards to, like, freak shit, how how ignorant they are of all uh-huh. the wild shit that you can do because they're, you know, the flow of information is controlled. So I wonder how far that extends into sexuality. Yeah, who you know, like they couldn't discover sixty nineing on their own. You always you have to hear about it on a bus in fourth grade to even figure yes, it out. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you got to wait till the fall of communism to find out about reverse cowgirl. <laughs> but it might have been that bad. But he gets back from doing his uh, fucking two years in the military. Comes back, he reconnects with his sister Tatiana. And he's getting older now. So we get to a point where he's approaching his late 20s. And by this point, most people in that area are married and have started families. And it just adds to his sense of um, a lack of masculinity, not having a family of his own. So he's trying to get hooked up. So his sister hooks him up with her friend, Faina, who also goes by the name of Fenya. Okay. And... She's getting older too, so she's probably she's probably the same. She's already just settled down at twenty eight years old. (laughs) Yes, you know she's from the same island of misfit toys. Like she couldn't find anybody to fucking bust her cheeks out, knock her up with some kids, and like get set up in that lifestyle. They get married in nineteen sixty three. They have two kids. How, Jake? The way that he says that he conceived his children was he would nut on her belly. All right? Scoop the nut with his fingers and shove it into her pussy. I thought you were going to say he was going to use his mouth. (laughs) A little slurp and glurp. (laughs) (laughs) I have to speak to a doctor uh, to see if this is even possible, but that is amazing. Talk, they conceived two children with this this belly to vagina. Dude, method. That's like a reverse coin return. <laughs> that's crazy. So he's fucking scooping cum into his wife's cooter with dirty ass fingers. Yeah, you know he didn't wash those things. No doubt. You. <laughs> and dude, they had two kids. Uh, the The girl that they had was born in 1969. Her name was Ludmilla. And the boy was born in 1969. And his name was Yuri which was short for urinary tract infection, <laughs> I'm presuming. <laughs> At this point, he's got, he's got his family, and he's still searching for a way to... Sexually please his wife? Nope. <laughs> Dude, he's looking for a way to find a gain some esteem with, with, within his community. He ends up getting a degree in Russian literature. This is 1970. He gets a degree in Russian literature, and he becomes a teacher. He's gotten clowned everywhere he's going for his limp dick bullshit because everybody finds out his boner doesn't work. When he becomes a teacher, the kids have no idea his fucking boner doesn't work. However... Thank God. <laughs> well, right Not now they yet. don't. Right yeah. now they don't. So he ends up teaching, and these fucking kids clown him mercilessly. Apparently the kids would fucking refer to him as Goose, which is a pretty rough Russian insult. What's it supposed to mean? I don't know. But if you called somebody a Goose, you were yeah. fighting but okay. he's a pussy-ass little bitch who can't get hard, so he's not doing shit about it. And on top of that, too, kids would just start smoking in his classes. <laughs> Dude, that, was that, 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 that was allowed, animals. though, back then, right? No. No? Oh. <laughs> Dude, that, not inside the classroom. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's... Kids are smoking in the fucking classes. That's and, so funny, dude. Imagine me at 15 years old just being like, fuck you, lighting <laughs> a cigarette. <laughs> oh, my God. Good for them. Well, this sort of shit is the catalyst for him engaging in more and more fucked up shit. Okay. He's feeling more powerless than ever, so he's like, all right, fuck this. I'm going to start doing my own kind of wild shit. He starts fucking fondling himself during class. Okay. He starts rubbing himself on fucking students. He'll fucking Dude, he'll fucking call kids up to his desk and just fuck with them just by getting, like, super close to them. And trying to, like, make it seem as though he's going over something with them, but he's invading their personal space the entire time. 
So he's he, getting out of this. He can't even get hard. He's exerting his power over them. Right. So just having that kind of power over them is enough to fucking, you know, at least give him somewhat of what he wants. Keep him going back to work. Dude, it gets so fucking bad that he calls a student back after class one day to admonish her for something, and he ends up spanking her with a ruler. It's not ending. She, he won't let her out of the classroom. She has to escape through a fucking classroom window. Jesus Christ. How is he still fucking working there? What happens is... See, what happened was... <laughs> but it, this, this doesn't happen yet. At a certain point... He, well, he keeps doing this shit. And then also, he does this fucking wild shit where there's... He's swimming in a river by the school. And he notices one of the school students also in the river. He swims up to her... And he starts groping her, and he won't let her go. Again, no boner, just fucking dry mushing his fucking meat against this poor kid. He fucking nuts in the water and then swims away. Jesus Christ, man. Dog, and it's only going to fucking get worse. And another thing, too. How's he keeping this job? Dude, a big reason why. Eventually, he does end up being asked for his resignation. But a big reason why. Asked for his resignation? How do they not fucking the entire town? <laughs> Stealing school supplies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gave us back the glue. Dude, one really fucked up thing I found out about the society was that they valued um, respect for elders so much. The kids would often be encouraged to refer to complete strangers as either aunt or uncle. So if some fucking pervert swims up to you in a river, there's a good chance that he was referred to as uncle like during their interaction. Weird. Yeah. Very strange. But eventually he exhibits like such fucking weird fucked up uh, behavior on a consistent basis that in 1974, the principal of school is like, dog, you got to fucking go. Like we're not going to fire you but you do have to give us your resignation. Jesus Christ. Was he doing, was it, at this time in Russia, were there any like women teachers or is that a dumb question? That's a great question. I don't know. Yeah, because I, I wonder how he was with like staff and administration. Dog, I, I'll, I'll bet he was cool because it seems to be. Yeah, he's only using, his kids are powerless to him. Yeah. And that's but, why he's freak, yeah. freaking on them. And, Pretty, pretty soon, he's going to start getting into the murders. Okay. Eventually, he's fucking... Con he's convicted of 52 murders. Holy Jesus Christ. Christ. So, More this mother it. is going to start fucking heating started. up fast. God damn. Working at this school as a teacher ignites something within him that he had never felt before. So, he's going to consistently push his boundaries. He's asked for his resignation at this fucking school. Eventually... Gets hired at a different school. He gets laid off from there just because of cutbacks. Like, he didn't get admonished for anything there. However, at the third school he ends up teaching at, it's this, um, in an area called Shakti, he, it's the same shit all over again. Like, students complaining that he's fucking inappropriate with them and he's asked for his resignation there. He ends, at this time, he ends up buying this weird shack in his town. This doesn't sound good. Nope. This sounds like the beginning of... 52 murders. Yes. <laughs> he buys this weird fucking sh shack uh, in the outskirts of town, and he says he's using it for experiments. Oh, my, oh God. my God. He can't even make something else up? Like, anything. Like, yeah. <laughs> anything but experiments, buddy. Uh, I'm, in a, I'm in a band. And like, <laughs> yeah. Just anything. <laughs> I'm trying to get my first boner, all right? And the shack seems like it might be the place. It's a podcast studio. It's... <laughs> He uses this Say shack. you're using it to fuck kids, dude. <laughs> that is better than experiments. What is that? Uh, it's, a, it's a little kid fucking house. <laughs> all right, dude. Just, just keep it out of my face, bro. All right? But yeah, a shack to do experiments is easily the most fucked up description of this place that you could give. Oh, my God. Dude, neighbors instantly recognize that some weird shit's going on. Because that's this picture like fucking blinking lights and <laughs> the sound of a fucking a time machine inside. <laughs> this guy might be onto something. 1.21 kilowatts! <laughs> Marty, it's your kids! <laughs> but dude, neighbors pick up that at fucking all hours of the day and night, this goofball is bringing young women and children into this fucking shack. 
Jesus. And dude, part of the reason, well, one, he has a uh, tendency to victimize people with mental disabilities. Okay. He's doing that, and he also takes advantage of people due to the economic conditions in the area. Yeah. People that don't have any food, he'll promise food. Um, people that just want a little bit of vodka, he claims he, he's got a little vodka back at the shack. Yeah. What so, year? They were in the 70s now? 1978. Jesus Christ, Oh, my God, that's not dude. even that long ago. Yeah. How right. is it so fucking... Conditions so bad and... Well, obviously, fucking... I think is Ukraine USSR then. Yeah, was, I think so. Right? Yeah, it, it's a part of it. I yeah. think it's just, it's there, there was something else. Like it was called. I, I wouldn't do it justice, and I'd sound like a fucking retard trying to explain exactly what it was. <laughs> However, it was part of it, and then when I think communism or the uh, Soviet Union disbanded in like 1991, I think. Yeah. Now up until that time, well, let, let me get more into the murders first. So in 1978. He ends up bringing a kid to the shack named Lena Zakotnova, who was a nine-year-old. It's a nine-year-old girl. He brings her to the ba- to the shack because he somehow comes across this kid. His M.O. would be he would come across vulnerable people or children that were either walking through uh, one of the towns that he was in at the time. Yeah. Well, for this one, it was in his hometown because it was it occurred in his shack. At this point in, you know, 78, it's not as rural as it was at the beginning of this guy's story. No, right? yeah, no, it's There's not. More yeah. towns and fucking. There is, yeah. There's like an actual country with cities. Yes. Yeah, and he's traveling. He's got to be traveling some distances between these towns, right? He does, and he ends up traveling a lot because he gets a job where it's it's a requirement for that job. Okay. But before that happens, this is right before Christmas, 1978, uh, two weeks after I was born. Happy belated. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but. He comes across this kid who's just walking, and this little girl eventually, during the course of their walk together, he catches up with her. She mentions that she has to go to the bathroom. He says, oh, I have a bathroom in my shack, which is the the worst thing that you could fucking... Yeah. Uh, I think I'll just piss my pants. Thanks, though, buddy. Oh, yeah. Man, what a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. So he takes advantage of this kid. He kidnaps her. He takes her back to the shack. He stabs her. Um... He he does like the thing where he ejaculates on her stomach. So it is sexual. This is like this is sexual yeah, at this point. Like, he's, like he might not be able technically to technically rape. It, it's, it's definitely like a sexual assault, right? Yeah. And he's doing like the same thing that like he the same method he used to impregnate his wife with the semen. Whoa! Yeah. Before he kills these people, dude. And a lot of he ends up doing so much fucked up shit. He had a very specific methodology to this. When he was arrested, he said when he would kill somebody, every action would be very deliberate. He said he would initially start with uh, shallow puncture wounds to the chest with a knife. Oh, my God, dude. And almost every victim who who he ended up killing had upwards of between 20 and 50 stab wounds. Jesus Christ, dude. So you're just getting stabbed over and over and over. Yes. And not even dying. No, well, eventually. Yeah. But he knows what he's doing as to where he's, he's like trying it's, to it's not. He's not on. just going to like slice your throat and then it's over within like a minute. Jesus, he's just Christ. stabbing you over and over and over again. So his first victim is this is this kid in 1978 who he assaults and then does that shit to her. He ends up strangling her too, in addition to stabbing her numerous times, and dumps her body in the river. Neighbors. Like I mentioned, like neighbors are aware of like all this weird shack shit, and he ends up getting questioned about this because people are people hear about this murder, and they're like, "Yo, not for nothing, but this fucking goofball that is going into the shack with all these fucking weird people and fucking kids might have had something to do with this." Yeah. But his wife Fenya gives him an alibi for the night, and on top of that, too, they're so hesitant to believe that a guy who's a teacher who has He's not. He hasn't really been in trouble because each time that he got busted at school it's for been, fucking diddling, diddling kids, secret. it's been brushed under, uh, swept yeah. under the rug. So he hasn't technically gotten into any trouble. Yeah. And the authorities see him as a man with a wife, two kids, and a decent job. They're like, "There's no way this guy is fucking doing this shit." And a hell of a murder shack. Yes. 
you don't just come across those things. Like you got to fucking work your way up to yeah. a murder shack, and <laughs> so they're like, "There's no way this this guy could have done it." They end up pinning the murder on this local pervert named Alexander Kravchenko. Why did this guy get fucking? When the, when Alexander Kravchenko was 17, he was convicted of multiple rapes and murders. So anytime anything fucked up happening in regards to like somebody coming up murdered or somebody who got sexually assaulted. This he w- dude's just coming out of jail and they're like, he did yeah, it. Yeah, back in there, pal. <laughs> yeah. Like he would be the f- not the fall guy because he did a lot of this shit, but he would be one of the usual suspects. He was a rapist and murderer for sure. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, he could have been fucking put to death. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it probably should have. Yeah. He ends up the rape and murder, um, the sexual assault and murder of this 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 nine year old that Andre Chikatilo killed get pinned gets pinned on this guy Alexander Kravchenko. They arrest him. He's sentenced for it, and he's fucking executed for it. Wow. Holy shit. How was so, he executed? You know. Uh well. I know the way Chikatilo was eventually executed was shot in the head. Okay. So damn, and that was in the eighties. Yes. Fucking a. Yeah. So I, I don't know if like it varied depending upon where in the USSR you got okay. fucking arrested, but how many bullets they had in that town? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just got to fucking book of matches. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, when fry he's... him up, baby. <laughs> fry his ass. Uh, I can't wait to tell you what uh, Andre Chikatilo's last words were too before the execution, but we'll get to that a little yeah. bit later. <laughs> Alright, so um, <laughs> was it it's for my experiments. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any chance we can move this to the shack? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Alexander Kravchenko gets popped for this and then in September of nineteen eighty one he ends up losing his last teaching job and he ends up getting a job as a supply clerk. So what that entailed was that Companies all throughout the USSR would get these raw materials, and you would, each each factory that these materials would be shipped to would have to produce a certain amount of goods related to how much they how many how much of the material they accepted. So Andre Chikatilo's job would be to travel all throughout the USSR, um, checking in to make sure production was going as scheduled, making sure none of this shit like falls off the back of a truck or something like. Yes, well that that was a big part of it too. And the funny thing is. He was was the one thing that would throw him into a fucking fit was if he would get accused of stealing shit, and he would steal shit. <laughs> so that that was his one bugaboo. If you accused him of being a thief, he would lose his fucking if shit. You accused him of doing what he had just did. <laughs> what are you putting those stolen materials in the shack? What the fuck <laughs> did you just say, you piece of shit? But that so job- wor- that's working for the government. That's a government. Yes. I guess it all is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he gets this fucking job, and shortly thereafter, now he's able to travel all over the place. So now, as he starts murdering more and more people, the MO goes from just randomly happening to come across people walking to meeting vulnerable people at train stations. He, he would purposely go to a train station and try to... He would hang out. Dude, it's like, yeah. you ever see, like, pickup artist videos where they just go from person to person to person <laughs> yeah. in the hopes of just knowing that eventually the law of average is going to work out on their side? Yeah. That's essentially what he would do. And he goes to this one train station, and his, ne- his second victim is this girl named Larissa Kachenko. And again, these are vulnerable people. A lot of cases, it's kids with fucked up upbringings, kids that are starving, kids that already have fucking addiction issues because alcoholism's running rampant in the Soviet Union. Yeah. So at a very young age, kids become dependent upon alcohol too. Mm -hmm. This girl, apparently the ruse that he was able to use to trick her into going into the woods, it was called relaxing in the woods. Like what that meant for for Russian people was that you would go into the woods to fuck because people usually didn't have, you know, they were sharing their spaces own. with their family, yeah. so you couldn't just go back to an apartment and fuck. Yeah. So he convinced this girl, Larissa Kachenko, to go to the woods with him and relax. And she knows what that means. She's aware of that. So she yeah. thinks they're going to go to the woods. And, and she is, like, uh, appropriately aged? Well, she's 17, so. We'll let him slide on this one, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but watch it, pal. <laughs> Any younger, we're going to bust you. Yeah. So... She is a little bit older, but still she's a kid. So he gets her back there. He doesn't have a knife on him. So during, like, heavy petting, I guess, 
again, he's not able to achieve erection. Mm. He realizes that she's starting to fucking, um, she's starting to like laugh at him because he's not able to get an erection. That's not going to help your case. No, 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 no. So the way that that he addresses this is as she's laughing at him and yelling at him, he starts grabbing handfuls of dirt and starts shoving it into her mouth. Oh, no. Dude, he ends up jamming so much dirt down her throat oh, that that's what she, she suffocates. Oh, my God. Oh. In addition to having her skull cracked. Jesus Christ. So she's beaten to death for fucking... She laughs at this fucking dude, and then eventually she starts fighting back, and then he freaks the fuck out. Yeah. So he starts attacking her. He starts shoving dirt down her throat. He fucking bashes her fucking skull in. And then on top of this, too, he ends up chewing her nipple off. Whoa. This is his second... This is his second murder. Victim. Yep. Chew- drastically... I mean, the first one was fucking extreme, too, but, like... Seems to be going in a direction where this dude will do anything to fucking. Yeah, everything is uh, unfortunately a progression upon the previous one. Oh my god! So he's stripped down. He's naked while he's doing all this shit. He bites off her nipple. He's covered in fucking blood. And by he's his, in the park. He's like it, he, he's in the woods. I guess he's far enough away from civilization that yeah. he can clean himself. So up. he's not even in the shack. No. Why get it? I mean, why buy So this it? is a field experiment, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he bites off her nipple, and then there's, he's covered in blood, and he's so pleased with himself that he says he just danced around naked in this field. Still no boner. No boner. Flopping dick. <laughs> Nothing bouncing, just flopping. So did he have, like, another, like, experience? Like a soft... Uh... Yeah, he comes soft on this one? He comes soft constantly. Okay. Dude, he becomes so aroused. Like, he said, when he started having these experiences where he would be able to totally dominate people, yeah. he said two things stood out. One, the pleasure from ejaculating. He would always experience enough pleasure from that experience alone through, like, dry humping and yeah. by controlling somebody that he would be able to ejaculate. And also, he said... These experiences relaxed them. Whew, nothing more relaxing than biting a nipple off a dead body and dancing around in the dark. What do you do with a nipple? What do you do with the rest of the body, Jake? <laughs> That's what I'm more concerned <laughs> yeah. with. Yeah. Well, dude, he would. He started getting into cannibalism, and this all the cannibalism would occur uh, during the murders. It wasn't like an Albert Fish where he would take the shit home, put it in Tupperware containers, and just fucking take it to work the next day. Like, anything that he would... He would cut he would cut fucking nipples off. He would cut noses off. He would cut tongues off. He would cut titties off. He would fucking remove female sexual organs. He would castrate men. Jesus Christ. Actually, boys. He never... I don't... I think his oldest male victim was 17, so technically none of the male... The men that he ended up killing were men. Yeah. So all of this shit, it was a gradual progression to doing this shit. Do you know where that body was disposed of? Did he leave it in the He left there? it there. Yeah. Apparently a lot of these areas were so fucked up and overrun with trash that... People don't even go walking through them. You would have to have a reason to go there. Yeah. Like eventually there's a police task force that's put together to go... To go try to figure out what the fuck's going on here. To figure out if they're related and if they are related... Um, just trying to establish commonalities and they end up going to a lot of these like fields where victims were left or supposedly last seen and there would just be so much trash there that it's like a lost cause yeah it's like how, how are we going to fucking and do I this? imagine oh, fucking like wild animals rud- mar- rummaging through these it's chaos there fields. it's chaos there yeah. like people are fucking pe- people don't give a fuck you know so these, are, these remains are probably eaten by a fucking animal well dude it's funny you bring that up because eventually a lot of the murders end up happening during warm weather months uh fucking springtime killer huh what a pussy a spring and summertime put killer. a hat on get out there dude <laughs> well he does get out there for some of them however so many of them end up occurring in spring and summertime and that that complicates things for the police because decomposition sets in uh, so much more faster. quickly yeah so that was that was his second one, and that one establishes that he's into cannibalism. Yeah, that's where he gets his first taste. Taste of the yeah. nipple. So, and that was like just 
an in the moment thing, and he like he fucking went with it, and then was like, "Ooh, I think I fucking Hulkamania is running wild through this animal's veins." Dude, I thought you were saying when you said the police uh, went through the fields that they just like stumbled upon like body after body. I was just like, wow, how do you explain that? Radioactive trash can, <laughs> yeah, human yeah. remains. Yeah. Well, it's such a fucked up place because even though starvation might not be as rampant as it was uh, during World War II, poverty is still fucking rampant. Nobody yeah. fucking has shit. So, Jake, where are we at on time? Uh, we are at, we're at 50 minutes. All right, yeah, let's shut it down. We'll move over to Patreon for part two of this and... So he's only on a second murder. This motherfucker ends up you, we got 50 admitting to murders. 53 fucking murders. Jesus, man. So he's he's just warming his hammies up. He admitted to all this. I mean, I guess if you get... Dude, w- once he gets rolling, he can't... Do you think it feels sh- good to cleanse yourself, like admit it in the end? Like, is that why these guys I'm, admit to so many? Well, it gets to a point where it's like you're going to die or spend your life in jail anyway. Do you think they get joy out of... Or like... I think it's a combination of relief that they're finally able to tell somebody, but then also I think they also get something out of reliving it. Oh, yeah, they tell, like, he tells the tale of each yes. fucking murder. Yeah. God damn. So let's switch it over to the Patreon for this one. Um, for all of our patrons, thank you so much for joining us over on Patreon. Yes, for, thank you. Yeah, you guys are the fucking best. And because of you, we're able to go to fucking Los Angeles next week, babe. We're going to film some cool little stinker shit. Related to OJ, to fucking Charles Manson. We're going to catch Charles Manson. I... <laughs> I'm going to beat his fucking ass. Chuck, Dude. I'm coming for you. Hollywood. We are going to fucking... I'm going to get down on all fours. John's going to push Charles Manson over my back. <laughs> we are going to make him look like an absolute fucking dickhead. We're all, you know who we're also coming for, guys? I didn't tell you this. is a surprise. Who? We're going to find OJ. Oh. We're going to get his ass. Well, you know he's not going to be in L.A. Because he might be... Next to the killer and not even realize it. Oh, He's banned, damn. Bro. He said he don't feel welcome there anymore. Fuck. Oh, no, no, no. He says he doesn't feel safe there anymore. Right? So wait, so we also have to go to Las Vegas to find him? Yeah. Oh, fuck, man. All right, well, we're going to need like 200 more patrons to make that happen. So <laughs> if you guys are listening to that and you can help us out. <laughs> Pony please, up. Yeah. Please go to patreon.com slash stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. What we usually do is um, you can only see part two of all these episodes over there. But in addition to that, when you become a patron, you get early access, both audio and video to everything that we do. So you'll get you'll get these episodes before the general public gets anything. So consider that and just come over there. Have fun with us. And also, guys, um, by the end of the, this Patreon episode, let's work out a, a date to do our live stream for December. Yeah, yeah. Because we're going to start yeah, doing yeah. that, too. We're going to do at least once a month a live stream where we just shoot the shit with everybody that's in there just talk about you know fun fucked up things that you're into fun fucked up things that you might want to see us cover on the show or just anything that's on your mind um we'll just have fun and then also it it didn't happen this i really want it to happen in november it's not going to happen but i assure you it will happen in in december starting in december we're going to have another episode just available exclusively to patrons Starting in December, and it's going to happen every month after that as well. All right. Stop making promises, Mike. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, we're also... Uh, also... Uh, uh, we're John's going to cut his hair for next one, and uh, <laughs> yeah. we're going to get penile implants in January if everything goes right. I'm, uh, I'm hosting a pancake breakfast over at the, uh, <laughs> over at the uh, cafeteria under the church. But I assure you that shit's going to happen in December because, dog, I am done school on Sunday. All right, December is the yeah. busiest fucking month for I don't give us. a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't have anything to do school-wise anymore. <laughs> fucking, my wife and kids can wait. I got fucking murderers to cover. All right, for every new patron, I'm losing five pounds. Five yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Jake has just disappeared. <laughs> Let's make Jake disappear. <laughs> All right, we'll see you over on the Patreon. Thanks, Bubs. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.